donate one dollar or more to participate in our lottery. 50% of the whole donated amount are split up between the winner of the lottery and a non-governmental organization. Participate until the end of March 2016. The rest of the money will be used to finish the Moon Man Chronicles Episode 1. Monacious day, everybody. So what are height maps? Height maps are raster graphic images containing values for surface elevation data. Therefore, a height map can be used in bump mapping and displacement mapping. In our version, we'll use black and white JPEGs with 256 values of gray. You probably won't use them as displacement maps as they are intended to reduce the amount of mesh data while scanning a lot of low-cost detail. Having these textures ready as brushes will greatly decrease the time you need to texture your 3D elements. I will show you how to make these textures yourself in Blender and XNormal, how to import them as brushes in GIMP and how to set them up in Substance Painter. We will also make use of custom-made height maps by Moonman Pictures, which you can get for free on my website alongside Jron's absolutely great collection of alpha maps that he's selling for 5 euros. All the links are in the description, of course. You can easily make these textures yourself. At first, go ahead and download the software XNormal from the internet. It's utterly powerful and completely free. As a first display of functionality, I'll quickly add an extra object and move it up until it lies on the grid floor. In Blender, export the file as a FBX file. Name it Hypoly. Now add a plane on another layer. Scale it up so it's at least bigger than the Hypoly object. Then export the file again, only this time as Low Poly FBX. Make sure you got selected objects only selected. Open up XNormal and load in both the files we just generated. Load in the high poly file to the high definition meshes and the low poly file to the low definition meshes. Succeed to bagging options and set your texture size. Edge padding is optional, might cause some problems though. Also select height map. Your bucket size will determine the render tiles. Larger tiles have served me better and took quite a bit less time. This depends on your CPU though. Name your file and set an output file type. Now hit generate maps and... Bummer! We need to assign a texture to our low poly object of course. So there is something to paint on. The low poly object can be seen as our canvas therefore. So go ahead and update the file. Load in the updated low poly and hit generate maps. This time the render starts as it should. The map is generated at your designated output folder. We will encounter a problem once again. The gear mesh is above the plane and should therefore render white. Our output is black though. This is because our high poly mesh doesn't really have any height information as it's completely flat in order to graphic view. Add a multi-resolution or bevel the rims to add a bit of variation to the mesh. The plane is much bigger than the rendered object also. So let's set a better canvas object relation. Increase the high poly mesh, close the gaps in the middle to get a better result and update and reload it. Everything should render fine now. Closing the gaps in the middle is optional, of course. It's only important if you want to detail the mesh further. For example, add a bevel along the rim, instead of an abrupt circle. 
Now you can just make a folder somewhere on your computer and make a series of height maps. Save the blend or FBX files and create your own height maps library. In case you are working on higher detail maps using bevel and other mesh operations, make sure to find any n-gons and transform them to quads or trees, as xnormal won't render them. Simply hit Shift and G to find faces that do not fit the selected pattern, to find any n-gons and fix the mess. To fix a n-gon, hit K and make a cut from the connecting vertices to the edge so it forms a quad or a tree without causing any other problems. Then hit Enter to fulfill your command. In general, objects that are above the low poly plane are closer to the theoretical camera and will render white. Everything below the plane will render black, whilst complete black means no height information and is thus flat. Now I want to show you a few ways of using these textures in Blender. They are easy to set up in both Blender Internal and Cycles. Let's start with the internal render. You can download the scene with the height maps textures on Gumroad on the Moonman Pictures website. It's entirely free, but I'd really appreciate any donations if you like this tutorial and to support me for future tutorials. So load up the scene or make your own cube. I've set up a simple rusty metallic material and added some height maps. The cube has a simple UV map with all quads sharing the same UV space. If you render the cube now, this is what you should get. And here's a little magic, enable frame and metal overlay. This is the frame texture that we are using. It serves as a stencil and a bump map. When stencil is enabled, its black and white values are affecting the overlay of all succeeding textures. Thus, the metal overlay is shining through where there are values of white on the stencil texture giving us a nice metallic frame without adding any vertices. If you don't like the bleeding effect, just disable RGB to intensity on the stencil texture. Now enable both sci-fi create textures and voila! A highly detailed sci-fi cube. You can use any height map texture as a brush also. Go ahead and open up GIMP or Photoshop. Now load in any of the height map textures. Name your file appropriately and save it as a GBR file to the following folder. Find your brushes in GIMP and click the button to load the custom made GIMP brush. Now you can easily paint your normal maps with these height maps. You can also load in photographic textures and transform them to black and white images and save them as brushes or height maps to paint with. I copy paste the lower half as the upper half has too little contrast and loses a lot of values. I blur the hard edges and there you go, a new detail brush. Just desaturate the image and play with the contrast. Bam, that's it. Now you can paint your object or character textures like robots or spaceships or really any other stuff and save a lot of vertices and render time. And coffee time. Substance Painter users can easily load in the brush as shown. I'm using the sci-fi crate that comes with the official Substance Painter tutorials. Add a new layer and search for a bump brush to quickly display if it works. Then go to File and search for Import Image in Project. Drag and drop the image to your brush and voila! Have fun painting your details. I'm painting with low resolution textures to be able to record. You should at least go as high as 2048 for good results though of course.